All right, Dan Vigella here, and welcome to another CLV Boost tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down one simple social media marketing strategy for lead generation. Oftentimes, social media can feel like it's a waste of time. You can sort of ask yourself, is this actually helping to grow my company? Uh, and to answer that question with a very succinct yes, you must set in place regimens specifically geared around lead generation. Um, and so today we're going to talk about a very flexible model that can vary from service businesses, e-commerce businesses, smaller business, larger businesses, um, to set in place such a regimen so that you can consistently track and monitor your social media activity, essentially set the process of your social media activity on autopilot, at least in so much as you can delegate it to someone, and know for a fact, because you'll have the numbers in front of you, how well such a strategy is correlating to lead generation. Um, so we're going to go through the four questions that you'll have to ask yourself, and by the end of this video, you should have a much clearer picture of what social media channels to commit to and how they're tangibly tying to leads, which you can then convert and add to your bottom line. So uh, without further ado, we'll move forward. First and foremost, we're talking about social media, yes, but I'm assuming here, for everyone who's tuned in, that you have some semblance of a blog site. Okay, some, some kind of a core website for your business whereby you can actually post your content. A social media strategy without any sort of relevant, juicy, uh, useful, fruitful content on your own website is a little bit flat and, and generally speaking is, is not a, a whole picture when it comes to digital marketing in general. We want your social media to help your site rank higher, we want your social media to drive a lot of website clicks and a lot of relevant viewers to your actual website and so I'm assuming that you have some degree of a blog here. This does not mean that you blog every day, this does not mean that you blog every other day, but this does imply that you have some degree of a blog on your site. So um, the first question you want to ask, the, or the first commitment you want to make to yourself is a content commitment. Namely, that you are going to be able to produce sufficient content to drive this strategy. In order to actually move social media forward, you cannot randomly wake up on whatever Wednesday you feel like and randomly post whatever you want on whatever social media channel you so feel like in that morning and expect it to have some kind of a tangible yield for you. Um, in general, right off the bat, you have to make some degree of a commitment to tangibly producing real videos of value, real articles of value, real infographics of value, real content of value. This is a content commitment. Some degree of a pace or a rhythm of content production that your business is capable of that can help you drive these leads, that can help make your social media genuinely valuable for your market and also valuable for your business in terms of generating leads. So some degree of a content commitment. By this I mean how, how much can you produce, how much can you allocate to social media. We could say that the bare minimum would be a single new, fresh, legitimately useful piece of content on your blog once per week. Um, if you have a lot of existing material, it might be uh, possible to slow that down even farther, but once per week we might see as sort of the bare minimum for basic social media strategy. So some degree of content. If, you're, if you have a YouTube channel, um, generally speaking, once per week is sort of the slow version of what you would do on your YouTube channel, a nice bare minimum to work with, but that's another content uh, commitment that you'd want to be able to come up with. So how, how, much, how many resources can you actually allocate to this, and what can you actually set in place as a minimum that you can legitimately stick to? In general, at least one article per week that's robust, useful, fruitful, tied to your business goals would be sort of a bare minimum, and so that's what we have to base this off of. We're going to talk about the three kinds of uh, web properties you can drive to from social media and from that blog, but this is really the first decision to make. Second decision to make is what is going to be the social media channel of choice. Where do your prospects live and what is conducive to your market? If you sell to a younger audience and you sell anything related to fitness or puppies or other things that people like to take pictures of, then you very, mail, very well may want to hang out on Instagram. Um, if by chance uh, you tend to deal with business folks in sort of the tech space, um, so not necessarily young, you know, the much younger crowd, but folks, you know, in, in a, a solid working career who are maybe interested in tech and tech business, you may find yourself on Twitter for the best engagement and probably the highest proclivity for your particular market to be hanging out there. If your product or your service 
is something that can be easily conveyed via video and you think video could could be of real value to your prospects in helping garner attention to you and educating them on your product, then YouTube or some other channel like Vimeo, a video channel of some kind, may in fact be helpful for you. Ideally, picking one or two social channels that you can commit to is significantly better than having them all and juggling them all poorly. Not only will that make you look a lot uh, more, uh, as my friend from New Jersey says, schmuckish uh, on the internet, uh, when you have a bunch of half-baked uh, social media presences online. But it'll be also very, very difficult for you to translate that to tangible ROI for your business. So picking one or two that you can commit to. For CLV Boost at the time of this recording, uh, really, well, actually, we use Twitter as well now that I think about it. So we're, we're on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And that's essentially it. Once a month, I have a regimen for LinkedIn, and once a month, I have a regimen for, for Google+. But really, on a weekly regimen, um, Facebook and YouTube are the biggest. We do have some, some Twitter strategies that we implement as well. Um, not, not tremendously intense, but we've at least committed to those. That means they get ongoing recurring attention, and we'll talk about that when we talk about tracking the system, delegating this process so that you as the business owner, as the head marketer, don't necessarily have to do all of this. So uh, picking your social media channel is important. Think to yourself right now. Uh, what kind of social media channel is your product conducive to? Where would it be displayed well? And where are you most likely to find your prospects? Once you can answer those two questions, you should be able to will yourself down to one or two social media channels that you know darn well you can actually stick to and do something with on a weekly basis as an ongoing regimen. So choosing those channels will be different per business. Now that we've done that, we can come up with our regimen. And essentially, if you want to drive leads, okay, so that what I've drawn here is a crudely, uh, a, a, a crudely drawn little web form, okay? This is supposed to be the submit button. These are supposed to be the options that you can click or fill out or whatever the case may be. This is a crudely drawn web form. Although it's possible to send people directly to a newsletter or directly to a free report of some kind or free video program, some kind of premium, or directly to a webinar registration or some kind of event registration. Although it's possible to drive them directly to uh, such an opt-in opportunity, it's often seen as uncouth on social media. And it's not necessarily something you're going to want to do all the time. Generally, social media is a place where value is traded, where interests are explored, not where people want to feel that leads are being generated. Even on LinkedIn, it's a bit uncouth to be driving directly to an opt-in opportunity. Normally, a web event is a little bit more acceptable online, but usually you are not going to be able to drive people directly to web forms from social. This makes people often feel like, well, shucks, that, that means I can't drive leads from social media. No, no, that's not the case at all. So we're going to talk about two different ways to blend your content with your lead generation strategy. So uh, two different ways to be able to pull this off that we'll talk about briefly. One is we're going to refer to as soft content. Okay. One we're going to refer to as hard content. Let's say that that uh, I'm I've decided that Facebook is going to be one of the platforms that I I leverage on a consistent basis for my business. Then I want to make sure that X times per week I'm linking to content on my site um, that also either on the side or somewhere at the bottom or somewhere in the text. It doesn't have to be overt. It doesn't have to be offensive. And, and I use these two as an example. You don't have to have something on the side and on the bottom. I'm just using them both as examples. That somewhere on this site. In, in relatively easy viewing uh, in the relatively easy viewing field is somewhere for someone to click and enter their information to become a lead. So maybe you send them to a video and let's say that you are in uh, l let's say that you sell camping gear online, okay? Um, while they're, while you send them to a video about uh, you know setting up a tent under high wind conditions, some kind of fun educational video, you may also have an opt-in for a coupon code, for 10% off the tents for this season on your website. Or at the bottom of the page, you may have a 21 page guide, uh, you know, Mountaineer's Basics Guide, that essentially explains a lot of the, the, the most important sort of preparation strategies for someone who's going to go on a mountaineering trip. So you might have an opt in over here, you might have an opt in over here, but they came to the website not to be turned into a lead, but just to drink in your content but you also happen to have soft calls to action to get them to convert. So if you're consistently driving traffic to your site, you want to have related uh, 
often soft calls to action to get people to opt in once they're there. Now, hard 